Hi, I've come to talk to you about the parallelogram law of vector addition. And this is about vector geometry. So notice the title there, vector geometry. What does that mean? It means using vectors to solve problems involving geometry. And geometry means shapes. Okay? And quite often what we do is we use the Cartesian axes or another coordinate system if you want, but we're using Cartesian axes, X and Y, to draw shapes and use vectors because it's helpful for us. Okay? But a lot of the rules associated with the parallel law of vector addition can help us with solving some problems. Now I'm going to talk you through them now. Okay? So this is a parallelogram and you'll see why, but I've labelled it this way, O, A, C, B. Okay, so it's not an alphabetical order. So this is parallelogram O, A, C, B. What I'm going to do is I'm going to call that there vector A and that there vector B. So that's why I label that O to B and O to A, you see, just so that um, ties in nicely with that. Okay, so if O, A is equal to A, then O, B is equal to B as well. We're going to derive some important results from that. Okay, now what I've also introduced for you is both... Um, ways of writing down a vector. So remember I talked a few videos ago about using the capital letters that represent the vertices on a shape, okay? Well here it is from O to A, that's the vector, but also the lowercase vectors underlined is another way, sometimes a more frequent way of representing a vector, okay? So OA is that and OB is that. Now, what's this parallelogram law of vector addition? Well, can you tell me what vector BC would be? Okay. BC is also going to be A, isn't it? Why? Because it's a parallelogram. The nature of a parallelogram means that that length is equal to that length and that direction is equal to that direction. Remember, vectors have both magnitude and direction. Okay? So they are the same. They're parallel and equal in length. Okay? So I'm going to label that A as well. And BC is also equal to A. What about AC? Well, that is going to be B, isn't it? For the same reasons. That vector and that vector are exactly the same. Okay. Now, it's an important point in vectors. Notice what I said. I said that vector and that vector are exactly the same. Okay. Because a vector tells you the movement from one position to another. Okay. So, vector B, I can draw it like this. Okay. And as long as vector B is parallel, equal length to that and that, they're all precisely the same vector. That's an important point to think about when you're doing these sorts of problems. doesn't matter where on your sheet of paper, your board, whatever, we call it a plane, doesn't matter where on your plane you draw the vector, as long as it's equal and um, parallel to these, they're precisely the same vector. Okay. So what have we got? So we've got those two vectors the same, those two vectors the same as well. What if I wanted to work out what the vector OC was. Yeah? Well, let me just show you what it looks like by drawing this here. That's the diagonal, isn't it, of the parallelogram. OC, what you do is you start at point O there and you want to find a path to C. Now that's the way I look at vectors. I think of vectors as a pathway from one point to another. What's the pathway that I can find from here to here? And there's two different paths, aren't there? But notice both paths lead you to the same point. You can either do this path or you can do this path. What vectors are we covering when we do each one? We're doing B followed by A, we're doing A followed by B. That's vector addition, okay? We're doing B plus A or we're doing A plus B, okay? And it's more convenient for us to write it in alphabetical order. A plus B, okay? That's the parallelogram law of vector addition, okay? Basically, it stems from having, if that is A and that is B, then from there to there, that's A plus B. And then you might think, well, that's just a triangle. Yes, you're right. But then if we add on this bit and this bit there as well, which is equal to that and that, then we have a parallelogram, hence the parallelogram law of vector addition, okay? I'm hoping that made some sense to you, okay? Uh, well, I've just done the parallelogram law of vector addition. Okay, before we move on, here's a simple example I want you to work through. Okay, maybe you just pause the video and try and work it out. Okay, A B C D is a parallelogram, shorthand for parallelogram. Okay, so there is A B C D, and A to B is that A, and A to D is that B. Find A C and B D. Okay, and then the next question: If M is the midpoint of B C, find A M. 
Right, pause the video and go. You better have paused it. I really hope you paused it. Okay. Right, I'm gonna go over the answers, okay? Well, look, A to C, can you see if it's from A to C, you can do this then this or this then this. Doesn't matter which way you do it, but you can do A plus B. Now even though I've not labelled it before, you should know that is B. And incidentally, while I'm at it, that is A as well, because of the parallel and law of Victor addition, okay? So A to C is A plus B. I'm not gonna draw it this time, but you can visualise A to C, okay? B to D. How do you get from B to D, okay? Where you can do this than this, or this than this, okay? I'm going to do this than this, okay? So B, and then subtract A. Are you happy with the subtract A? Okay? Because if you're going to do the same path, but in the opposite direction, then it's negative A, okay? Now, you might have written this than this, negative A plus B. Yes, negative A plus B is right. But what looks neat as our answer? Negative A plus B or B minus A? I'm hoping you remember from algebra, it's always best to write like that. Fewer symbols to write down, you see. Next, M is the midpoint of BC. Okay, So M is there. Let me just erase that bit there now, because um, it's just going to get in the way, isn't it? Okay, So just make it a bit neater. So M is there. Okay, Find AM. So from here to here. Okay, well, what we're going to do is we're going to do A first of all, so let's just write that down. And then, of course, we're only going halfway along BC, aren't we? Okay, so this could be half of B, half B. And that's it. Okay, all good? Great. Uh, here's the next example I'm going to ask you to work through. Okay, so A, B, C, D is a trapezium. Okay, there it is. A, B, C, D is a trapezium. The ratio BC to AD is 1 to 2. Okay, The ratio A of uh, BC to AD is 1 to 2. You're told this, AB is represented by vector A, and BC is represented by vector B. These are your questions. You've got to find AD, CD, and then your last question, M and N are the midpoints of AB and CD respectively. Find MN. Pause the video and go. How do we get on with this one? Okay. Right. Let's have a look at it, okay? So, um, AD. Well, what does this bit here mean? 1 to 2. This is a ratio notation for basically saying that AD is twice as long as BC, isn't it? Remember, these are lengths, BC and AD. They're not vectors, although I could have said that because they are parallel obviously because it's a trapezium okay but I didn't need to okay so what it says AD is twice as long as BC now if BC is B that means that AD must be 2B you agree with that I hope you agree with that okay so so far what we've we got we've got this vector here is A we've got this vector BC is B and we've just worked out all of this here A to D is 2B Sometimes it's useful to just label it up in the diagram. Right, CD. <laughs> CD. Hope you didn't do anything silly. Did any of you write negative A? No. no. Well, first off, okay, this is not necessarily an isosceles trapezium. What's one of those? An isosceles trapezium is where those two lengths are the same and those two angles are the same. No. No, you can't assume or make assumptions like that. Okay? And even if it was, you can't say that that is negative A because negative A is just that in the opposite direction. Okay? Now, you've got to work it out. Okay? There's no genuine shortcuts to this. You've got to work it out. Okay? To get from C to D, you're going to have to go the long way around to do it. Okay? You have to go the long way around. If you didn't do that, maybe you pause the video again and have a go at it. Okay? So you go from C to B, and then B to A, and then A to D. And look, I'm going to sort of think ahead here into, well, what's coming up in the depth, but also next year as well, in year 13, okay? Because it's going to help you a little bit, okay? So what I'm going to do is we'll write it up here like this. So C to D, yeah, is the same as going from C to B plus B to A plus A to D. That's a vector way of saying it, okay? C, B, followed by B, A, followed by A, D. That's a vector way of saying it, okay? And we'll work out separate each of these vectors are, all right? 
So CB, what's that? It's negative B, isn't it? Okay, so negative B. Okay, oops, B is not great there. B to A, what's that? Well, it's negative A, isn't it? Okay, negative A. And then AD, what's that? We worked out there, didn't we? 2B, okay? So plus 2B, okay? Is that how we leave our answer? Or we're going to simplify it? Of course, we're going to simplify it, okay? So 2B subtract B is just B subtract A. So it's B minus A, okay? And I've just got space to write that in there, B minus A, okay? You okay with that? So just, um, you know, in case you wanted to freeze it or whatever and just take notes on it, okay? So that's, that's that one, okay? So that's B minus A, okay? So if you want, you can record that as B minus A, okay? Now, let's do this bit. Now, where am I going to put this? I'll put it there, okay? Um, M and N are the midpoints of AB, so M and N and CD, okay? Find what M, N is, okay? Could you have a guess if you didn't get it right? If you didn't, sorry, if you didn't attempt it, could you have a guess, do you think? Okay. Maybe you've just draw an imaginary line from M to N. What do you notice? You could probably have a guess, couldn't you? Okay. And anyway, we'll see it at the end. Okay. So what are we going to do for this bit, okay? Well, you've got a choice. You either go this way round, like that, or you go this way round, like that. You decide which one's easiest, okay? If you didn't do that, maybe you pause the video again and then have a go at it. So look, I'm just going to take you through it. Hope you've unpaused the video now, okay? So what we're going to do? We're going to go from M to N, yeah? Um, and that's equal to, well, I'm going to go this way around, just because it's easier, to be honest, okay? So, because uh, if you think about it, the vectors, they're all kind of positive. So A is that way, B is that way, and we worked out C, D, which is that way. So it's, it's just been easier, okay? So M to N is going to be N to B, so we've got MB plus BC plus CN, all right? And then we can work out what that is. So MB, that's going to be half A, because it's halfway from here to here, isn't it? And then from B to C, that's going to be B. And then CN, well, that's going to be half of what we found earlier, CD, which was that B minus A. So half of B minus A, like that. Okay, not forgetting to underline all the vectors. Is that okay for you? And then we'll simplify that. Let's do it in two goes, shall we? So half A plus B plus half B minus half A. You see, just expanding brackets works the same way as algebra. Okay, and then half A subtract half A. That's simple, isn't it? Okay, so that's just zero. B plus half B, three over two. Remember, you know, Fractions always better than decimals. 3 over 2, B. Okay, so that's it. So I'm going to write our answer in there. So that's going to be 3 over 2, B. 1 and a half, B. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah, one more time. Good. Now, remember that question I asked you? I said, could you maybe have a guess at what it is? Okay, well, first of all, I hope you'd notice that because they're both midpoints, if you join them together, that's going to be parallel to B, C, and A, D. Okay, it's going to be parallel. That's one of the natures of the parallelograms. Okay, it's going to be parallel. Okay, so notice how b, 2b, and 3 over 2b, they're all something times b. Remember that Greek letter lambda I introduced you to a while back? Okay, that means they're all parallel because it's some scalar times by b. Okay, also notice if that is length 1b, that is length 2b, that is length 1 and a half b. Notice it's not a coincidence that it's precisely half of halfway between 1b and 2b, okay? It's because it's halfway up the trapezium, okay? Maybe you kind of spotted it in case, very well done, and I mean that, okay? Or maybe you're just thinking, oh yeah, it kind of makes sense, yeah. Okay, so you've actually mathematically proved that, okay? So if you said, oh, that's obviously one and a half b, I might say to prove it, okay? Remember, proof is a bit of a hard thing. That is what you might call a, a simple vector proof that from here to here it is one and a half b okay well, i'm hoping that you found that example useful okay so uh, i forgot to change my t-shirt okay but mm, yeah at least it's not a bad t-shirt it could have been worse okay all right good